Hey guys, Zetabit here. I'm excited to show you this code. I'm really excited to show you this code. But before I get started, let me just tell you that I've recorded this video multiple times, and each and every one of the times, my sound has not recorded. I finally got it working, so here it is. You guys should be very happy to get this code. I'm going to teach you how to do the random number function generator. It's a great code to have. It's amazing. You can use it for anything. I've used it for rolling dice, flipping coins, dealing damage, healing health, all sorts of things. You know, I'm I'm really glad to show you this code. If you don't know it, you have to know this. This is amazing. You can use it on anything. I want you to experiment with this too. Uh, I want you to let me know what you think of the code and. I want you to leave it in the comments below and let me know what you use this code for to get multiple options open for it for any other user looking for some sort of way to use this if they have to use it or if they want to use it for something but they don't know how. So let's get started. Let me show you how to use this code. I'm going to start by opening up Visual Basic 6, and I just opened up Photoshop. I'm going to have a really slow time. Alright. Open up Standard EXE Project. Well, it's simple code. It's about four lines, five lines. It's very, very easy. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm starting to get a cold, even though the weather's starting to warm up. I don't understand that. So add a command button, add a label to your form, that's all you need. Let's open up our code. We'll just create a quick variable as an integer. So I'm going to public a as integer. Underneath that we're going to write public function. Public function random number. That's the name of our function, so when we go to call it to use it later on in the video, and that's what we'll be typing to call it. We're going to type our upper as integer comma optional, our lower as integer end parentheses as integer enter. We're going to type randomize between the lines, and we're going to type random number underneath that equals int open parenthesis open parenthesis r upper minus r lower plus one end parenthesis asterisk rnd plus r lower end parenthesis that's it all the code you need now what this is right here our upper as integer optional, our lower as integer, we are declaring our variables. Our upper is the maximum that it can go. For this example today, I'm actually going to use a dice, so it'll be six. Optionally, you can have a minimum, which is our lower. That's why we wrote optional our lower. Optionally, you can type one, two, all the way to one before your minimum, or one before your maximum, excuse me. Or you can just leave it blank and you can type six and parentheses when we get to the code later. And it'll do between zero and six. So that's why it's optional. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click our command button code and we're going to open that up and we're just going to type in A equals random number open parenthesis. Now if you look at the tool tip on your Visual Basic, because you probably won't be able to see it on this one because it's so small, you could see that it says random number open parentheses r upper as integer comma open bracket r lower as integer end bracket end parentheses as integer. That's basically what we just typed for our function. In fact, it is what we just typed. So where it says R upper is integer, since I'm doing a dice, I'm going to type 6. Now I'm going to type comma, and this is where you can just leave it blank. You can actually just do 6 and parenthesis, and it'll do it between 0 and 6. Or you can type parenthesis, and you do 1, and it'll do it between 6 and 1, or 1 and 6, to make more sense of it. So now that you have your variable set between your random numbers 6 and 1, you have to place it somewhere. 
So we're going to do it on that label that we created earlier. I'm going to do label one dot caption equals A. That's it. That's all you need to do to place the label. So we're going to test this out real quick. And first click is one. Second click is five. One, five, four, three, five, five, four, excuse me, five, three, five, three, four. Now it is repetitive because the numbers are so condensed together. That explains, you know, why you would be getting it more than one time. So to show that it isn't repetitive, we're going to do it between 100 and 1. And we're going to click it a few times and notice that, well, you probably can't see it, but if you try it out, notice that it doesn't really repeat itself that often. And if it does, it's once in quite a while. Now we're going to just do 100 and parentheses. Now it, the fact that it's set up this way, it can hit 0, but it will not go below. It will not go below 0. It can go between 0 and 100, though. That's It will not go above 100 because that's what we set as a maximum. I just got 0 a little bit ago and 100 right now. Now, let me make this font bigger for you in the label so you guys can actually see what I'm getting. And now, as you can see, when I click it now, it's 16. All sorts of different numbers. Not repetitive. What we're going to do, just to show you that you don't have to have your minimum at 1 or 0, I will set it to 50 for you. Now 150, it will not go below 50 and it will not go above 100. Now the fact that the numbers are closer together, it is likelier to be repetitive. I mean that's, that's just the way it, if it is because if it was just 1 or 2, you would either get 1, you would either get 2 or 1. So you it will always be repetitive because like, I just got like 1 4 times in a row because they are so sponged together. It's either that one or that one, so you're always going to repeat. Now, I can set it between 1,000 and 999. See? Where it's just the same as 1 and 2. I want you to go ahead and experiment with this code. I want you to ex just push it to its limits. This is a, a nice code to have. It's fantastic. I love it. Uh, I use mine right now. I use it for three things. I use it to heal health in a game that I'm creating, and I use it to deal damage in the same game that I'm creating. And along with that, I use it to declare who goes first when they have the same amount of speed. And I do that by flipping a coin. If it's above 50, it's tails. If it's below 50, it's heads. So, I'm Zetabit. I just showed you how to use the random number function. Subscribe.